This week on Tech Chop, Bauer Puntu 12.10 and Torcon 14. This episode of Tech Chop is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Welcome to episode 38 of Tech Shop. I, of course, am Paul Bauer, aka twitter.com slash Pablo. This week will hopefully not be too long for you, as I have two main topics I want to cover. The first topic is the recent release of Bauer Puntu Linux 12.10. As many of you already know, for the last few years I've been releasing my own custom version of Ubuntu Linux, just about every six months, whenever Ubuntu releases a new version. This version and the one before it, Bauer Puntu 12.04, are actually based on Xubuntu Linux. Before talking more about Bauer Puntu 12.10, I want to also talk about the recent TorCon Hacker Conference I went to October 19th through the 21st. As always, there was a lot of cool information and talks, and I want to share some of the tidbits from a couple of them with you. Stuff like hacking key pass passwords, or hacking into hydrogen fuel cells, and fighting internet kill switch from the government. You know, the good stuff. Let's get back to Bauer Puntu 12.10 though. As I mentioned before, I based this version off of Xubuntu, once again because it is way easier to customize than the standard Ubuntu distribution. This go around I went ahead and made the default Windows Manager Cinnamon instead of XFCE or Unity. After all, I originally started this project because I hated the <coughs> brown color of the original Ubuntu. And I'm not a big fan of girly purple either. The artwork is pretty much the same in this version, but there are a bunch of new tools such as... Fern Wi-Fi Cracker for GUI wireless hacking. Reaver for terminal WPS hacking. Metasploit Framework 4.4 with Armitage. TrueCrypt. TrueCrack for brute forcing TrueCrypt volumes. Nmap. Ncat. Edercap NG. OpenVos server and client. IP list for keeping the man from monitoring your BitTorrent downloads. Offcrack. Samdump2. BKHive. Tor browser bundle for anonymous internet browsing. And the UFW firewall. It's also important to note that in this version you can opt to fully encrypt your hard drive at install time. That is very slick, and if you want to do that with Bauer Puntu, just know that the custom Plymouth Splash I use doesn't work well with Lux encryption. So as soon as you see it, you need to press F2 to enter your encryption password. Then press F1 to continue to boot. Annoying maybe, but I also think it's kind of cool that no password prompt comes up by default. If someone steals your laptop and tries to boot it up, It'll just get stuck on the splash screen without the prompt. They'll just think that the system is broken and probably won't think to look for the hidden prompt. Think of it as security by obscurity. You know, instead of just a bug. You can get a copy of Bauer Puntu at the link below in both ISO and torrent format. If you want a faster download, you might want to use the torrent. And if you download the torrent, I would ask that you seed it for at least 24 hours to help out the cause. Now to talk about TorCon. But first... Meetings are essential to the way we work. It allows us to put our heads together to get stuff done. What does that mean, a bunch of stuff? Well, it means it's simply inaccurate. It's Irish. <laughs> Problem is, it's pretty much impossible to put heads together if those heads are spread out in different locations. Or is it? Not if you use GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate online. We use GoToMeeting at my office all the time, and you should be using it too. No matter where everyone is located, GoToMeeting allows you to share the same screen, making it easier to be on the same page. And with built-in HD video conferencing, you can see each other face-to-face -face so you can really put those heads together. It's so easy to launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, phone, or tablet. And now you can even present from your iPad. Boom! TechShop viewers can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. Remember, use the promo code PODCAST so they know that TechShop sent you. GoToMeeting. Meeting is believing. In the first part of the show, I mentioned attending TorCon 14 held at the Emerald Plaza West End in downtown San Diego from October 19th through the 21st. With me in attendance were Darren Kitchen from Hack5 and Nixie Pixel from OS Alt and Geek Buzz on Revision 3. Along with us video podcasters, there were also a crap load of hackers and security experts, and out of those bunch of uber geeks and hooligans were several speakers. Three of the talks really resonated with me, and I want to talk about them a bit. The first talk I want to mention was titled The Long Tail of the Internet by Dan Tentler, aka Biss. His talk was about using a search tool called Shodan, which is sort of like Google but for TCP banner information. It's been talked about a lot in the use of finding unsecured surveillance cameras, but Dan wanted to see what else was out there. 
He found all sorts of things, from traffic cameras to hydrogen fuel cells, from ice rink climate controls to a website used to control dam pressure in France. All these things he found could easily be accessed using default passwords or no password at all. Check out this clip from a similar talk Dan gave back at DEF CON 20. Um, they have several, you can see some of uh, blanked out there, several IP addresses, and I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but um, when you, when you uh, open this little, uh, the little plus symbol there and, and, and the, the sub menu items come in, um, they look kind of interesting. One of them I saw was uh, Gigantium. So I'm like, oh, that looks cool. So let's Google that. What's Gigantium? Oh, it's a stadium thing. And under that wood is an ice rink that you can defrost if you want. <laughs> okay, I said it was random. The next talk I wanted to mention was by a guy named Joseph Giron, who came up with a little nasty piece of malware called Password Snarfer. What it does is looks for a particular string in memory whenever the copy buffer is used to copy a password out of KeePass. When that string is identified, Password Snarfer writes whatever is in the Windows copy buffer to a text file while simultaneously taking a screenshot of whatever you have open so you can find the username that matches the password. It's important to point out that this tool only works in Windows, so if you use KeePass on Mac or Linux, you're safe. Also, this tool doesn't attack KeePass or the encryption KeePass uses itself, so your passwords are safe while at rest. Password Snarfer acts sort of like a keylogger, I would say, except for instead of capturing keystrokes, it pulls specific information out of memory. Currently, Password Snarfer is undetectable by antivirus. The final talk I wanted to mention was from a guy named Drew Porter, aka Redshift. Drew is working on a project called DustNet, which is essentially a darknet in a box that is a self-contained secure server and wireless networking device that one can use with a community of people to build their own internet in the event that the government shuts down the internet and all communications. Check out a clip from his talk. So <clears throat> this is it, as you guys can see. Uh, there is another darknet, uh, darknet, dustnet box that I have made. Um, it's the support box for it. Um, <laughs> there is many working demos of that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we talk about, you know, well, the internet can be shut down. Okay, well, what has that actually happened? Like, yeah, you're just some crazy gender that's up here that's like all into conspiracies. Where has this happened? So, in the past 10 years, this is where it's happened. Um, and, you know, we, we might think, oh, it's never going to happen to us but I'm sure that's what people in those countries thought as well. Um, so this is why we should start preparing before we actually have to worry about anything. And I know that's a little, you know, tinfoil hat-ish, but that's what I honestly believe. You can learn more about the DustNet project at the link below. That's all I have for this episode. As always, if you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear them. Please sound off below or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to like, fave, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time right here on Tech Shop. Tech Shop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.